Again, we're hearing from a lot of our uh, elected city leaders. Yes, we are. J.B. Smiley and Martavius Jones are standing by to uh, share some information with us today mm -hmm. as well. Both of them, of course, uh, city council members mm -hmm. and one a former candidate for governor. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. J.B. Smiley is an attorney mm -hmm. and a city council member who did run for governor. And so uh, before we get to Martavius Jones, Mr. Smiley, first your reaction to the developments today with the indictments and the arrest of these former Memphis police officers. Necessary. If we look at where we need to go as a community, the very first thing we want to do is make sure we are holding the officers accountable, but also charging them with the appropriate charges. And I believe the charges that the district attorney's office brought were the most severe that could possibly be brought that we could also prove. If more information comes out, I would hope to see that the district attorney office uh, brings even more severe charges. All right, Mr. Jo uh, Mr. Jones, um, your thoughts as a city leader, mm. uh, your thoughts of the, at, at, the, at how fast this all has taken place, does it give you uh, pause? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on it? You know, it hasn't given us pause. Uh, Tuesday, we had a city council meeting and we had members of the public to come down. The Memphis City Council is the first and primary contact for many citizens in Memphis. Uh, the, the administration doesn't have monthly or bi-monthly meetings where people can come by and voice their opinions. So this, it, this is a community effort to bring justice to Mr. Nichols in this unfortunate incident. Um, I'm, I'm pleased that the district attorney has brought these charges. And now we just hope that justice will prevail. Uh, and, and this is the first step. We just want to remind people of that. Thought uh, right now, gentlemen, is uh, for our police department, as we go forward with the very challenging and demanding job of policing our city, a 300 square mile city with, I believe at the last count I heard, our troop number was about 1,950 officers. I know that changes day to day based on retirements and training of uh, new officers in the police academy. But I just can't imagine being the head of training at the police academy today. I can't imagine being uh, one of these trainers who worked so carefully with these five officers who uh, are indicted now and face very, very serious charges. And, and we have to find a balance somewhere, gentlemen, don't we, in recruiting uh, responsible police officers who are going to do the job mm -hmm. in the appropriate fashion and, um, you know, the, 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 the fighting of crime. I mean, it's just a, it's, it's a tough, tough job. Either one of you, please. It, 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 it really is, and it does speak to the, the evaluation process. The, uh, when somebody interviews, somebody applies for the job, what type of evaluation is taking place of possible uh, future police officers? And so the training is going to be important. But one thing I still want to say, this should not reflect on all police officers. We have, and it, now we know that there could be more officers, but this is, this is still a small number of the total of number of police officers who put their lives on the line every day. However, we do have to address this issue and make sure that it does not happen again through whatever means that we can, whether it's, but between training, between evaluation, whether it's psychological or otherwise, candidates who want to put themselves in front of the public and who want to protect and serve our citizens. Absolutely, and to piggyback off Councilman Jones, when we talk about training, I think training going forward has to forever be changed. It shouldn't just be um, the law enforcement officers going through a course with just themselves. I think at some point we talk about how do we bridge the gap between public perception of the police department and the community. At some point we have to talk about what it looks like to work together with the community collectively as we change training going forward. But it cannot be police officers, law enforcement officers in the community. It has to be us all working together to make this right. I would pose a question to either of you gentlemen. Uh, this is Joy Redmond, by the way. Good to see both of you. L listen, at the heart of all of this, I was thinking uh, Kim so eloquently posed this question to State Senator London Lamar about does it make a difference that this was a black on black crime, so to speak? Really no other way to describe mm -hmm. it because we know that they have been charged with second degree murder in this. Uh, obviously, you two are distinguished black gentlemen in this community and you are educated. You represent this city. What Two, I guess it's a two-fold question. Your initial reaction to hearing that this was one of you, this was your brother, this was a black man 
who we now know was beaten by fellow black officers. I mean, this had to hit you differently. Well, no, it, you know, go ahead, JB. Uh, for me, um, it just makes me remember, you know, where we are in, as it relates to the state of uh, police culture. But, you know, for my initial action was yet again, but as it relates to um, hitting differently, it hits the same. It, isn't, it shouldn't be or isn't viewed as a culture of, you know, black on black and public perception. It's blue versus black and brown communities. And we have to do everything in our power to address that. And the only way we can address it between uh, folks on the Memphis City Council is by power of the pen. We have to draft comprehensive legislation so that we are never in this position again. If we look at the city of Memphis, it's a majority minority city. No one ever thought it would be Memphis, but Memphis will set the standard going forward as it relates to how to respond to these type of incidents and also make sure our laws are effective so we don't see this type of situation again. Very good. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and uh, uh, sharing your thoughts about uh, on this day. Um, we would probably like to hear from you again once that video is released to get your mm -hmm. thoughts about that as well. We'll be in touch, I'm sure. Surely. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you both, both very much. Now, um,